adrenaline okay, rush get is going. Get some Definitely, some water. it's skyrocketing. My heart's about to like just jump oh, yeah, out of the Мы собрались в присутствии Бога и в присутствии всех гостей, чтобы побрать Пашу и Наташу в святом брагосочетании. Библия учит нас, что брак является святым установлением, установлен на небесах божественной мудростью и Божьей добротой. Бог сказал, нехорошо быть человеку одному, и сотворил ему помощника, соответственно ему, ему. Бог тоже сказал, и они станут одной плотью. Иисус Христос, Сын Божий, уважил и благословил свадьбу в Кане Галилейской своим присутствием. И прямо там Он совершил свое первое чудо, предоставляя хорошее настроение и много радостью хозяину и его гостям. Библия говорит в Исаии 62, 5, «As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so God will rejoice over you. Let us pray and ask God's Lord's blessings upon this ceremony». Мы помолимся и попросим Божьего благословения на это бракосочетание. Heavenly Father, we come just to you with thanksgiving in our hearts for this special day that you have ordained before creation of this world. We are so grateful for your love. We thank you for your mercy that's new this morning. Thank you for Paul and Natalie that could make this a special day for us to rejoice and celebrate when two lives decided to become one. We're asking your holy presence to be among us. We're asking your holy anointing to be about, upon the ceremony. We're asking for your Holy Spirit to be with them and just bless the ceremony and uh, bless Paul and Natalie. We ask it in Jesus' mind. We welcome your Holy Spirit to take complete control 
of our lives and this day we pray and ask in Jesus mighty name amen you may be seated we more still persist when God created world Adam the man was formed first then the woman Eve uh, scripture says that the woman might be for man, setting forth humility, modesty, and gentleness that should characterize her kind. Yet man is being made uh, last of all God's creation, was set forth as the best of most excellent of all God's created work. So Eve being made after Adam and out of him, sets an honor upon the woman as being the glory of man. If the man is the head, then she is the crown. The crown for her husband. Uh, the man must do, um, was dust refined, but the woman was twice refined. One step farther from the dust, from the earth. In being created from man or out of man, she was not out of his head to dominate or to be over him. Nor out of his, of, out of his feet to be under him or tramped upon by him. Rather, she was out of his sight to be equal with him, from under his arm to be protected by him, and near his heart to be loved by him. Love, love, love. Everything we need is love. What is love? What is love? There's the old uh, classic song starts with question, what is love? What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Baby, don't hurt me. And it speaks volumes of today's experiences when people come and think of love. However, let us look in the Holy Scriptures and analyze love from biblical perspective. Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says, uh, verse 4, Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous. It doesn't brag and is not proud. Love is not rude. It is not selfish. It doesn't get upset with others. Love doesn't count up wrongs that have been done. Love patiently accepts all things. It always trusts, always hopes, and always endures. Love never ends. When we look today on the marriages, and uh, what must a couple do to be happily married? The Bible teaches us through the different texts and encourages us to love each other sacrificially and unconditionally. Sacrificial and unconditional love perhaps were important elements of successful marriages of other parents. Commitment in marriage was another basic ingredient for a successful marriage. Once married, a couple was forever married from God's perspective. But unfortunately, we are witnessing a change in our culture today that threatens the nuclear family. The value of self, uh, selflessness was replaced by selfishness. M the me generation has been born. Many people today are not in the mood to be selfless or committed after being the victim of neglect, abuse, and etc. When people get married, the question comes, who is in charge? Who is the head of the house? По-русски мы говорим с четверти всегда, что мужчина – он голова, а женщина – это шея. Куда вертнет, туда и поведет. Я вспоминаю старую пословицу, когда муж пришел домой и спрашивает жены, ногой ступая по полу, кто есть хозяин дома? И жена взяла сковородку, и он быстро пошел под стол и вылазит, как испуганная мышка, и говорит, что, даже нельзя спросить? Uh, Bible speaks clearly on roles of husbands and wives and how we should treat each other. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and following, Apostle Paul writes, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the, the washing with water through the word and present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle, or any other blemish, but holy and blameless, in the same way hus husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wives loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but they feed and care for their body, 
just as Christ does the church. For, there, for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. In some Western cultures, or today, in the culture where we live, to, uh, to expect wives to be submissive to their husband isn't considered politically correct. But Apostle Paul's words seem pretty straightforward. The key here is voluntary submission out of reverence. Paul isn't demanding obedience. Though obedience is involved with submission, he is asking for an attitude toward one's husband of voluntary submission not forced. The marriage relationships here presented to a reflection of the relationship between Christ and His Church. The Church, as the Bride of Christ, readily acknowledges His authority and seeks to please Him in every respect. When the marriage is seen in the light of the higher relationship between Christ and His body, His wife finds no difficulty in submitting to her husband for he has obligation to her in the Lord. In a Greco-Roman society, it was recognized wives had obligations to their husband, but not vice versa. But here we see something new and different. Christianity introduced a revolutionary approach to marriage that equalized the rights of wives and husband and established an institution much firmer foundation than ever before. One word summed up the role of wife, submit. One word does the same for husband, love, agape. This is the highest and distinctive Christian word for love. Once again, Apostle Paul draws comparison between marriage relationship and the relationship of Christ uh, and the church. It was on the cross that the Lord gave himself up for his bride. Verse 28, for man to love his wife is to love himself. She is to be treated as, she is not to be treated as a piece of property. It was a custom in, Paul, in Paul's days. She is to be regarded as extension of man's own personality and a part of himself. The wife, for her part, is to give her husband the respect that is due to him in the Lord. As in verse 21, as made plain, such a respect is con uh, continued by, by an expressive reverence for Christ. Maybe some of us puzzled why Paul doesn't tell wives that they are to love their husbands. And we fail to appreciate the analogy. Christ loves the church. The church's love for Christ is expressed in submission and obedience. Leave and cleave. There are two different but very significant words that become part of our life. To leave means to sever one relationship before establishing another. This doesn't mean you disregard your parents. Rather, it requires that you break your tie to them and assume responsibility to each other. To cleave means to weld together, becoming one flesh. This term is beautiful description of oneness, completeness, a permanence of a God intended in the marriage relationship. The two are blended together so you appear as one, yet you each retain your own distinct identity and personality. But now you have a marriage personality that exists in two of you. Often people mis mis uh, misunderstand the words of wedding ceremony, two shall become one. Any attempt to mold your, our mates in effort to match them to our fantasies is arrogance on our part and insult to them. While it's true we cannot mold or remake another person, we can allow them to change. What will it take to make your marriage sizzle. Uh, let's look at certain keys for marital success 
that we wish and pray for you to achieve. Because somebody said it's easy to get married, it's harder to stay married. Marital satisfaction grows from effective conflict resolution. I know Paul loves reading books, and just about two years ago, he's been reading already books about marriage. And when you learn to resolve your conflicts in the right way, your marriage will be successful. It is important for you to learn communication skills, learn to listen to each other, and respect each other's opinions. One of the reasons many failures in marriages today is a loss of feeling of love for each other, or we, some call it a romantic love. Couples are unwilling to remain in loveless marriages. And important need uh, to have a marriage successful, it's important to meet each other's emotional needs. Unfortunately, most couples don't realize what they're getting into when they say, I do. We think the dynamics of a good marriage depends on some mysterious blend of the right person. Or if a marriage turns out badly, we call the two people wrong for each other. However, more frequently marital breakups happen when one or both partners lack the skill, skills or awareness to meet each other's emotional needs. What is emotional need? An emotional need is a craving for something that makes us feel good. When we have it, uh, we feel, uh, when, 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 it feels good when we have it. And, uh, and when we don't have it, we feel frustrated. There's a top 10 categories of emotional needs. It's uh, admiration, affection, conversation, domestic support, family commitment, financial support, honesty and openness, physical attractiveness, recreational companionship, and sexual fulfillment. On average, the emotional needs that are ranked in the top five for men tend to be ranked in the lowest five by women and vice versa. It's important to remember we have same needs, but we need different things on the different level. The biblical command just as you want others to do for you, do the same for them. Luke 6, 31. It doesn't apply when you don't want the same thing. But this command can be paraphrased without loss of meaning when it comes to marriage. Since men and women need different things from each other, we can interpret the command following. Meet your spouse's most important emo emotional needs because you would want your spouse to meet yours. It is important to realize that each one of us ha has a love bank. It contains many different accounts. Each person makes either deposits or withdrawals whenever we interact with him or her. Pleasurable interactions cause deposits and painful interactions cause withdrawals. Certain habits destroy the feeling of romantic love and it's important to identify them. The ways to make each other unhappy, causing large withdrawals from each other's love bank. And thought, uh, thoughtless habits or behaviors that are repeated to do the most damage in marriage. You will have to identify these, these love busters and that cause withdrawals in each other's love bank. Paul, I would encourage you to meet Natalie's two most important emotional needs and Natalie to, to meet Paul's top two needs regularly. Just by meeting each other's top two emotional needs, spouse make massive love bank deposits and likely to fall in love and with each other and grow in love with each other. Павел, ты сейчас берешь на себя целомудренную решимость, священный обед подвергая на себя серьезные, важные и постоянные ответственности. Женщина, которую ты, вы, которую ты выбрал, скоро станет партнером твоей жизни, санатле, санаследником твоих имуществ, королева твоего дома. Лучше не может она показать тебе свою любовь, как оставляя свои домашние связи, компаньонские отношения друзей. Все это, чтобы разделить с тобой радость и печаль жизни. С тобой она сейчас останется, и для тебя она будет жить. Наташа, 
ты тоже берешь на себя важную ответ, ответственность. Муж, за которого ты сейчас выходишь замуж, будет искать тебе утешение во время испытания. Твоя улыбка будет для него самым ярким днем. Твой голос будет его любимой музыкой. Твое старание будет самым большим богатством для него. Твое сбережение – это его надежное руководство, и твои уста – это верный советник. И твои молитвы – это самый умелый защитник на небесном суде. Paul, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife, to live together after God's holy ordinance, in a holy estate of matrimony? Will you love her, comfort her, honor her, and keep her in sickness and health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only to her as long as both shall live? I will. Natalie, will you have this man to be your wedded husband, to live together after God's holy ordinance? In the holy estate of matrimony, will you love him, honor and keep him in sickness and health? and forsaking all others, keeping yourself only to him as long as both shall live. I will. Now, Paul and Natalie, they will exchange their personal vows. testimony of God's grace upon my life. I can never thank God enough for granting me you. I promise to take care of you, to love you, protect you, and lead you the best I know how. I may not always be perfect, I may mess up at times along the way, but I promise to give it my all. A famous quote says, love is blind, but marriage opens your eyes. Well, I am more than thrilled to get to know all of you, all of your imperfections, and yet love all of you as Christ loved the church. I choose to love you through both the sunny and the rainy days, and we all know it rains a lot in Washington. <laughs> I will love you through the highs and the lows, on a mountain top or in a valley low, for rich or for poor, in sickness or in health. I am here to stay. I'm here to love you and to cherish you through every season. From watching our children grow together to going on walks when we're old. Natalie, I'm here to stay. A young love may be like flickering flames, bright with sparkles and looking good to the eye, but I'm excited for our love to grow as burning coals and during the test of time. Natalie, while I still have breath in my lungs, I will love you with every strength that I have. My true love and constant prayer, the one I say to myself for, I am all yours and you are mine. Together we will get through. We may not know every detail of our journey homes, but we will know that faith, hope, and love will be there. It's love is the way to live. I believe that I will fall in love, but grow in love. Our love will always go through. Our love from source is in the heart of God, who grows stronger as we grow closer together. We can face the future with more hope. With my whole heart, I give myself to you, and with my whole heart, I take care of you always. I vow to be your faithful partner, to trust you, respect you, and praise you in all your ways. I submit myself to you. I will be yours for rich or for poor, in sickness and in health, for death or for sorrow. I promise to continue to go on walks with you even when you are over 80 years old and carry your son. I will take you, I will take care of you and dream with you, celebrate with you, and walk beside you whenever our lives get tough. I loved you yesterday, I love you today, I love you tomorrow, I love you now.
Now let me speak to your hearts. I charge you both as you hope for happiness in your marriage, married life to be true to these vows you have made to each other. With your marriage from this day, you begin a li life anew with larger responsibilities. Paul, God well, this is your bride who now commits herself into your keeping and strife so to live in the Lord. So, no, so, that, so that no word or deed of yours will discourage her with grief or dim her eyes with tears. Natalie, it will be your part to strive to retain by your virtues the heart you won by your graces. And both of you, I would say, let not your voice lose the tender tones of affection. Not your eyes forget the tender ray with which they shone on the courtship's day. And greatest of all, let God be enthroned above all else all the time. We're going to be praying, and I would like parents to come step forward. We'll be praying and asking Lord's blessings upon you. Будем сейчас молиться и благословлять, благословлять ваших детей. Попросил бы, чтобы родители стали и вначале будет молиться а, отец нашего молодого, потом мама, потом будет мама молодой. После молитвы э, от родителей э, будет молиться Павел и Натали.
Если вам не тяжело, протяните свои руки, и мы будем молиться молитвой и благословением за а, Пашу и Наташу. Небесный Батько, мы приходим до Тебя с подякою за то, что Ты є добрый, любящий и присутний на этом месте. Мы дякуем Тебе за то, что мы можем быть свидетелями решения тих двух сердец, которые решили стать одним. Мы дякуем за то, что Ты, Господь, Показ відкрився їм перше на особистому рівні за те, що вони пізнали тебе як Господа та Спасителя свого життя, за те, що вони стали на дорогу учнівства і пішли ідуть за тобою. Дякуємо за те, що ти сьогодні, Господь, робиш все одну команду, одну сім'ю. Ти є автор сім'ї. Перш ніж ти створив церкву, ти створив сім'ю. І коли диявол хоче розбити, ми дякуємо за те, що ти, Господь, встановлюєш і показуєш прикладом цього, що что ты имеешь на увазі. Мы просим Твоего Божественного Захисту, Господь, Твоего Святого Ведения, Твоего Батьковского Благословения, Твоего Помазания в их жизни на особистому семейному уровне, Господь, чтобы Ты благословил их деточками, Господь, и чтобы, Господь, Твоя благословение волевалося на них в каждую сферу их жизни. Мы просим, чтобы Твоє благословение было и Твоє Святое Ведение, чтобы они, Господь, жили життям целенаправленным, чтобы они не жили життям для себя, но зрикаючись себе, вставши на дорогу и идти за тобою, поднявши этот крест, который ты имеешь для них, и чтобы они жили для тебя, Господь, чтобы служили другим, служили людям, потому что мы створены, Господь, на добрые дела. Нехай, Господь, никогда они не втомлюются от работы на ниве твоей. И я прошу, Господь, чтобы ты вів их, использовал их и вживал для славы своей. Мы просим, чтобы ты, Господь, выливал свою и небесные благословения в каждую сферу их жизни. И научи их, Господь, любить один одного. Научи Павла любить Господь, Наталью, Господь, так как ты, Господь, полюбил церковь свою, что ты отдал себя за нее. И научи, Господь, Наталью шанувати, поважати Павла, Господь, чтобы Господь, он видел, Господь, ее любовь до него через ее повагу до него. Мы просим, Господь, чтобы они выросли в тебе, Господь, научились решать труднощі разом, виклики життя, Господь, чтобы они, Господь, были, Господь, однією командою, поддержкой один для одного, и нехай, Господь, ничего не сможет их отдалить от від Тебя, от від Твоей любови и от любови, яку Ты, Господь, вклав в них, в их сердца. Нехай завжди они, Господь, запалюют эту любовь, памятаючи, Господь, эту первую любовь, в которой они закохали один одного. Мы просим Твоего благословения и верим, что Ты проведешь Твого захисту, и мы все просим в имя Отца и Сына и Святого Духа. Амин. 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 В начале церемонии мы видели, как родители или мамы зажгли две свечи. Мама зажила свеч Паше, дающий ему свою жизнь, когда он родился. И мама зажила свеч Наташи, подарила ей жизнь. И до сегодняшнего дня эти две свечи горели отделенно, сами по себе. И сейчас они смогут подойти символизуя свою одинокость, объединение в одну Unity Candle, свеча объединения, когда двое стают одним. После этого они говорят goodbye to my old singlehood. singlehood. Холостяство говорят папа, они ее задуют, и они leave оставляют свои родители, домашние связи, и они к Лию пристают к друг другу, становятся одной семьей, одним монолитом, одной автономной семьей. Мы сейчас дадим возможность с ним подойти и зажать обоим Unity Candle. Пусть Бог благословит.
For as much as Paul and Natalie have consented together in the holy wedlock and witnessed the same before God and this company, I thereto have declared the same by giving and receiving uh, the ring, I by the authority invested in me as a minister of the gospel and in accordance with the laws of this commonwealth, pronounce you husband and wife, no longer two, but now one in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I now have a dis distinct honor of presenting to you Mr. and Mrs. Paul and Natalie Aliferchik. And now you may kiss the bride. Congratulations. God bless you.